The fire that burns in the social, psychological, and spiritual dimensions of humanity can ruin the world. Or this fire can transform into community. It's up to us. Sitting in the fire, Arnold Mendel. In this program, and in this series, you'll learn about a group process called World Work, a process committed to building community by paying close attention to power, rank, revenge, and abuse in group work. World Work begins with the work of Dr. Arnold Mendel. Trained first as a theoretical physicist at MIT in Boston, he went on to study Jungian psychology in Switzerland. There he drew on other psychological approaches, Eastern philosophy, non-Western and shamanic traditions to develop his own approach to individual therapy. It's called process work. Today there are thousands of people around the world who have been trained in this therapeutic approach. In the 1980s, with Dr. Amy Mendel and other process work colleagues, Arnie Mendel began to apply these personal therapeutic techniques to class, race, gender, and other conflicts that arise at the group and social level, a process that is now called world work. So world work works at the, at the most uh, everyday level of rights and distribution of power and distribution of money and distribution of uh, uh, respect and what have you and also at this deeper level. All the feeling stuff and emotional human stuff, the upsetness, the antagonism, the great dreams and desires that we have, giving that a floor and letting that stuff come forward and speak. And so world work deals with learning how to manage and get deeper into the emotional and then even into the dream-like situations of all of us so that we can come together and work together better. The Mindells and other world work facilitators work with a variety of groups and businesses around the world. And over the years, they've held world work training seminars in Europe, in India, in the state of Oregon, and in the summer of 1999 in Washington, D.C. at Howard University. Here in Washington, as in all world work seminars, there's no agenda per se. The group as a whole tries to fairly sort through all the issues and concerns in the room and come to a consensus on which issue to focus. We have tried to get Northern Ireland on the board since we have arrived. I really would like us to focus on Holocaust and contemporary uh, anti-Semitism. I want to be heard. This is exactly what you do in international development. The push us back on the agenda, back and back and down all the time. Our sister is here, who is indigenous, who is invisible in this country, Native American Indians. In my country, on my land, I'm invisible. I'd like Hold to speak. I have, a, I have a topic for eldership. And we Thank just want you. to get ourselves on the board. Uh, we can go on with issues all day. I come from Balkans, and I would like us to focus on gay and lesbian today so that we can really focus on what is happening over there tomorrow. After several attempts to be recognized, the Asian group was finally able to have the larger group focus on their issue, by chance. But I, I do hear four issues coming forward, and maybe we can um, choose by spinning a pen. Let's put, let's um, the, put the group over. Go ahead. Yeah, the subgroup, I just want to reiterate, the subgroup is the group that's going to come forward and work among themselves in the middle. Um, I, I agree. Actually, I agree. And uh, as Asian, we, we follow the Tao. But uh, why we bring up this issue as working in the Asian is because the, how, how, we can, how we can bring a communication style in this group and you are speaking out so much and there is no room for us to speaking out because this is not our way to and how we can bring our 
communication style is maybe our Asian getting together and uh, show how we communicate each other. I want to um, respect other group which came later, but uh, I I also want 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 you to be respected how we did. On this side would be the Asian group, and on this side would be the younger people's group, and the pen has a point. He's just putting it in the room. That's more on the Asian people's side. Should, should we welcome that group? Let's welcome that group into the middle. Put it to their side. I have not the side. Let's ask them about what, what kind of facilitation they want. Could we ask you as a group um, what kind of facilitation you would like? Would you like for us to join you? Would you like for some of us to join you? Would you like facilitation from somewhere else? Would you like to facilitate your own process? How, how, can, we, how can we be of assistance? I want to check first if there is somebody who hesitate to come forward as Asian, but who identified themselves as Asian, please come and join us. And I'd like to say one thing before we start. We will use English to, um, to make us understood by you or for all large group, but sometimes maybe we are urgent to speak our mother tongue. So please forgive us to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure. In, not, I'm sorry, in Japanese, so I would like to speak in Japanese. Thank you. Ano, hola, taksan ne? Ano, fuska kan de sa? Iron na hanashi ga deta janai no yo. We talked about a lot of things last two days at lunch time. De, mina saisho wa ne? Ano, totemo iraira se tan da yo ne? Everybody was frustrated at the beginning. Because uh, the speed here is so quick. All talkers is so speedy, talking, quick, quick. I didn't have a time to really contemplate on what people are talking about. I felt so sad in me. And I also needed to be acknowledged that there are those of us in this Asian group as well who, I'm not fluent in Chinese, I'm fluent in English. So we are, we are a diverse group. My first language is English. When, uh, when, when you speak about your uh, mother tongue, so I, I saw your feeling, you, you have feeling. Yeah, maybe you can, can you share the feeling? I don't want to push, but... Uh, I feel like I'm in a waking dream. This entire day has been raw for me, to put it mildly. And the emotion you're sensing isn't really about the language. It's a little bit, but it's only slightly. It has more to do with something that came up in my subgroup that I'm really struggling with at, on a personal level, as a woman, and as an Asian American. It's all of it. And it has to do for me with taking up space.
I'm not comfortable taking up space. The fact that I'm in here right now is just like a dream. I can't believe I'm here taking space. I was accused during my subgroup, and it's not even personal, of taking up space. And my first thought was, I am. And I started to count all the times I had taken space. But then when I thought about it, I realized I really haven't taken very much space. But I think I am. I'm willing to believe it first and foremost. And then the next th thought is, why don't I want to take space? Everyone here is trying to take some space to deal with their issues. And for me, as an individual shaped by my Asianness, shaped by my womanness, shaped by all these things, I always think everybody else has a higher priority than me. I just do. And so when somebody outside confirms that, because maybe they sense that's what I really believe, my first thought is, oh God, I've, I've taken too much space. But I really have not. And the warrioress in me is wanting to just scream because I'm pretty contained. I think that's a partly an Asian thing too. I'm not comfortable dominating the space. I, I, can, I can relate to you. And um, I'm, I finally spoke out. It was so tough for me to speak out. And uh, um, and take somebody's space. And, um, but I, I feel also very um, uh, uh, how do you say? appreciative. Some people uh, supported us to take space. And um, as Asian, we give, uh, we've given um, enough space. And um, I think it's time for us to use space. Silence. I want to say, facilitator, please f f feel free to come in. And please respect our pace and the pause and silence. Yeah. I, I, I think I have some... I have some resistance to express my feeling in, in have some resistance to express my feeling in, in front of such a large people. That should be personal to me. I don't know, it's my culture or it's my, uh, I don't know, myself or my personality, or I don't know. Mm. Um, before we go on, now we Japanese are speaking mainly, so. But, yeah. yeah, can I just say I like the fact that the Japanese are speaking. <laughs> It's good, it's good, to, it's good to hear you. I, I'd like to speak something um, about my feelings because I don't know how many years, uh, Mi, Mia, that's her name? Yeah, you have been here. I guess you are probably, you've been here probably for so many years. So as a Chinese who's probably, I, I consider myself like one out of 1.2 billion. That's, that's someone, I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm the only one Chinese here. And um, first of all, I feel really privileged. And since I've been living 27 years in China, and I totally feel what you just said about not being seen or heard. And it, 
it happens sometimes in my personal re relationships too. Um, I just want to take my personal responsibility for that too, because I haven't been spoken up. Um, and I think I'm going to try to change it. Uh, my feeling about this whole process, um, group process, is a lot of the issues that are discussed here also exist in China, but that's, but just it's more underground and like, Nobody, it's like a taboo. Nobody talks about it. Like gay people issues and oppression, marginalization, everything. And there are also a lot of huge issues that are not discussed, which I'm wondering, will we ever talk about those? Or if we talk about those, and then what? I feel like sometimes we're, it's only my feeling, we're just more like talking about things and gaining awareness and then nothing much happens afterwards. Um, one of those issues is the Tibetan issue. Um, I have a friend who's a Tibetan and, th who's a, Tibetan. yeah, who's a Tibetan. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> she said she said those people sold their souls. Koreans sold their own brothers and sisters to Japanese and killed them for their own survival. And the others refused to become Japanese, to speak, to study at school. And you know what happened to those? The ones who refused died. And the ones who refused are the lower rank, socially lower rank Koreans now. And the ones who went with Japanese and studied and learned Japanese language and all that has the power, social power in Korea. Same thing in China. Everybody is, everybody is forced or pressured to learn the Mandarin Chinese, which is called official Chinese, the standard Chinese. And I. I don't know what other people, what other minority groups feel. Hana, Hana, can I talk to you? <laughs> um. oh. This is actually um, um, the fact that your brother, I mean, Kore some Korean sold uh, they are sold to Japanese. Actually, um, it's um, it's not their responsibility. It's uh, our, I mean, Japanese responsibility. We we made them to do this, and um, um, All over the world is imperialism, all over the world it was a 
colonialism for the time spirit. I can see it. But, uh, but so I don't also... want to blame you. I don't want to blame Japan either. Because I love you and I also see you suffering from Hiroshima. Please I, just remember the history. Yes, yes, I will. I will. And I, I will try to wake uh, other Japanese up to remember. And uh, um, um, there is still so many um, Korean women and Asian women mm. can talk about their humiliation, their rape and abuse and hurt, the pain, all that. Mm. All these women, oh my god, and I got a ring that I did, and I know. Not only the Japanese, but also the Chinese, the Mongolian. I have to say something. I'm really having a hard time right now. Because Hana is the disowned part of me that won't allow myself to go into big show in front of a lot of people. And I, I can't do that. It horrifies me to do that. It horrifies to watch me, watch her doing this because this is just part of that self-contained part. So I've got a little tape playing right now in my head that's thinking, oh God, people are thinking that we're being so indulgent with, our, with the space right now. I wonder if any other group thinks that when they're here. Do anybody else here think? Because no, I, I think I'm that. I'm so angry at your Chinese and Japanese and American law because right now the Korea is divided into two. To north and south and we divided. And meanwhile, sorry, I don't relate to this because I'm Asian American. I just don't relate to it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I can't do this. It's just a face like it. But we have now created a space over here where maybe all the pain of the, of the women that Hannah is talking about, we can hear. I would like to listen. We are speaking in English, but I feel so at home being with other, I mean, Japanese, Indian, um, Chinese, Iran, Korean, yeah, Philippines. And I feel so at home with you, but in the same time, there is a gap between, uh, between among us because of war, because of the past, because of the economic difference. And um, I, I, I also want to use this space to um, narrower this gap between us and understand each other. When I was coming to world work, I really hoped somewhere that there would be someone here from Pakistan. And I feel very sad that there isn't, especially given what's happening in, in Kashmir at the moment. That's all I wanted to say. I want to say that I am uh, very happy that we've come together as a group in Asia. And yes, there are so many conflicts which are tearing our continent apart. And every time there's a conflict, I don't know whether it's a chicken or egg which follows first, but the US or Russia has a stake. We have news in the war in Kashmir at the moment. Pakistan has invited Russia to mediate, which again affects the balance of power in the world. So we come together and get to know each other and become involved with is a good beginning for me. Yeah, uh, I want to say 
thank you to everybody who comes here because I use it very kindly to welcome Japanese. But as an Asian, Japanese oppress many other Asian countries. And actually, my father was a Navy officer of the last World War II and attacked some countries and something. And on the other hand, um, my mother is born in Okinawa as an indigenous people in Japan. Um, the, her aunt were killed by the last World War II. So, yeah, I feel always you know, double-binded feelings and uh, I didn't identify it with, uh, as an Asian. So I'm also always feeling, feel some isolated feeling. So um, now, but the now here's atmosphere here is very yeah, comfortable and very safety feelings. Um, the, yeah, I want to, one, one part of me want to apologize the Asian people uh, that my, our country oppress. And, uh, so I want to not, I want to notice the in my murder part yes yes and um, I want to yeah, think yeah how can we how we can use our mur you know in my murder in useful way. Sometimes you know, in symbol, we need a symbolic death or something. But, um, so it, uh, and uh, um, we admit ourselves as a uh, murder. It's so hard things, so sad things. But uh, exactly in me, there was a murder. So I want to think about it. It's just that, yeah. トランスレーション。あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、
I want to say, I want to be friend with you and I'm gonna close to you, but I cannot say verbally. Yeah. Because I feel something which reject me that exists in you. Because I'm a Japanese. And I'm a just ordinary Japanese. え、あの、沖縄で生まれたのでもないし、どこで生まれたのでもない。日本の真ん中で生まれて両親も日本人ですから、どこにも逃げるところがありません。言い訳がない、ありません。I was not どうもありがとう。後でまた言いたいことが出てくるかもしれません。聞いてくださってどうもありがとう。Thank you very much listening to me. I may have something to say later on, but this time thank you so much. Ask a question. Just uh, Kazuko said she was rejected by I'm not sure who she meant, by whom? I think uh, maybe my translation wasn't clear enough. I think uh, when she wants to close to other Asian countries' people, she sees something in them which, which is rejecting her as a Japanese. Is it clear? I wanted to say something. And it's going to shift the focus a little bit. But I wanted to, first off, to say to Kasako that You've shown me nothing but kindness since I've met you. And there's something so comforting about your face to me. You know, I've, I've really appreciated it. And it's forcing me to be very honest about my own prejudices and internalized oppression. As somebody who emigrated to the US when I was three years old, I've worked so hard most of my life to be accepted by American that in moments in my life I've been racist towards Asians because there's this assumption that all Asians speak with an accent, that all Asians are from someplace else, that they're not also American. And in my life and in my work as a scholar and stuff, I've always identified with those Asians who have been here a long time, even though I haven't. I'm a 1.5 generation. I was born elsewhere. But I have racism inside me towards Asians. It's a self-hate. I know it intellectually. I study it. I teach it. And I still feel it. There have been those of you in this audience who have come up to me in friendliness and have said, are you from China? Are you from Korea? And I, it doesn't e I don't even, this quick answer comes out. It's, no, I'm American. And it's this defensiveness that I have. I identify more with African Americans, Latinos, other minority groups in the US. And, and that's also my own internalized stuff, because this is what I have to deal with. It's you, not you, that I have to deal with. And I know I'm shifting the focus, but I have to put that piece in here too. I, for me, I deal with being the model minority, the group that's in the middle. I'm not white, but I'm not black. So I kind of fit with whites because whites like Asians, but I'm also black because I'm not white, and I get enough racism to prove that I'm not white. So I need to put that piece into the, the pot as well. I don't think uh, what you brought up is separate from what we are talking. So for example, as Japanese, so we have also same feeling. And uh, 
And that's why we, we've worked so hard and also colonized other country. We want, we want, we've wanted to be as other, like other European country. So the issue is the same. I just want to say that Asia bashing is prevalent. It's, it's very strong. And a lot of us have picked that up here. Whether it's you know, blaming Japanese workers for stealing American jobs, um, whether it's uh, blaming Chinese uh, US citizens for corrupting US politicians as if that's what was needed. And, and whether it's demonizing the Indian people and the Pakistani people for daring to create their own nuclear bombs as if they don't have a right to, to, to defend themselves or they don't have the technology or China doesn't have the technology to create those weapons that the U.S. has, and only the U.S. has those rights. So we have to realize that we can't go along with this Asia bashing. We have to fight it. We have to fight it amongst, with, within us, and we have to fight it when it raises its ugly head in our workplaces, and, and we have to stop teaching it. I feel like such a hypocrite so often. I teach this, I study this, I research this, and I still feel, embody it. I have to be really honest. When I say that, I see a couple in front of me and they're speaking Chinese, and I become nativist. It's like, they're speaking Chinese. Uh-oh, what are people gonna think? Maybe they think I'm with them. Maybe they think I speak just Chinese. Maybe, da -da 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 -da, you know? If they were speaking any European language, I wouldn't feel the same because I would not be worried that I'd be seen in the same group. And I hate that. It's the part of me that's so insecure about my status in this society that makes me be even doubly racist. And here's the other kicker. I know all this. This knows this, this studies this, this writes about this, gets published about this, and it doesn't matter, because it's a completely different channel that we're talking about. And I can't believe I'm admitting it in this room. <laughs> I don't feel like I have a right to be here, and I told you why. But I feel like I have a right to be here to support you and to support the internal part of me that has been vacant and, and absent in my life. The internal oppression comes from the inside where I am born half European part Filipino, part Chinese, part Spanish. I knew this only because people would ask me when I was a child, what are you? And I went home and I asked my family, who were not my natural parents, what am I? And they said, oh, you're American. What about this other stuff? People think I'm Chinese, what am I? Oh, well, you have, you have a father in the Philippines, but they think you're a dog over there, so you don't want to associate. And so I didn't. And I had this, this richness in my, in my life inside that, that I would come back to every once in a while. Like, I have these roots and I want to be there, and I don't know what they're about, and I didn't go. And it's only been of late when I found out how rich and valuable this is to me and when I came to you two days ago and talked to you it's so big to be here among you I have not faced I have not faced the external oppression that you face every day by living in this country 
And in the way that this has been silenced inside me, I'm only beginning to realize how it has been silenced here with you living in, in, the, in the United States and, and, and in many of the places where you live in the, in the inner oppression that occurs within the countries. And I am so proud to be able to share part of this with you today. So thank you. I wanted to say that uh, uh, within minutes of coming down and sitting here, I suddenly began to feel very cold. And I realized I am frightened because um, And unless we make peace with each other, you have the power to uh, terminate me. Um, India, Pakistan, our countries, we hurt each other so much. And I'm frightened by our power and what we do to each other. A former president of the Japanese American Citizen League once said that we Asian Americans feel like we're guests in somebody else's house. We're invited in, but we can never take our shoes off and get comfortable. I'm realizing just how much my life is embodied by that. Because I speak English better than you, I can pretend that I've got more legitimacy here, but I don't. And in fact, I pretend in order to make myself feel more secure that I really do belong here. But I don't. Because when the chips fall, we're all seen as the same. Whenever I hear about China having tensions with the US, or Japan having tensions with the US, or Korea having tensions with the US, I shudder. Because if we went to war, who's going to know that I'm an Asian American? Who's going to know that I've been here all my conscious life. Who's going to know that a fourth generation Asian American's been here forever? They're not going to care. It's like we're guests in somebody else's house. Can we have some space, please? And that's, I think, what was the issue for me and my subgroup. Instead of thinking I can just claim it, there's always that part of me that thinks, but do I have permission to do so? It's like, I need permission. And that pisses me off. Because I can't, I can't go to China. <laughs> the Chinese aren't going to know what to do with me. I'm American. <laughs> but only we might know that. <laughs> that we're, how similar we are, but how different we are, too. I am uh, David from Philadelphia. I was born in Chicago, uh, and I am thoroughly American, uh, raised among, my father's a professor, and he's, we, we lived among the um, university settings, so I identify with being uh, an American. Um, I identify so much with being an American that until college, I, I actually thought I had um, blonde hair and blue eyes. Um, it's sort of hard, it's sort of, I, it's sort of amazing that I, I think that. I thought that, that even in the mirror, I would still think that I had blonde hair and blue eyes. Um, uh, I'm thoroughly a American, but 20 years ago, I went to China with my father, and I learned that uh, I am Chinese too. And dear Japanese friends, I... <sighs> Okay. In China, I um, do Japanese friends, please. Japanese friends. I um, went to China with my father, and the first week of uh, in being in China with him, we, we, hadn't, we were trying to get to his hometown. 
So he began to have memories of his life in China uh, during, during his youth, during the period of the uh, Japanese-Chinese War. And he cried every day. He, he had never cried. He only cried once in his life. But during that time, he cried every day. And I saw something about him. I'm getting off the point. Dear Japanese friends, I carry my father's pain, his hatred of the Japanese. I carry his pain. But I, I do not have that pain. But I carry that pain because he is my father, and, and my heritage is important to me. Um, you carry your guilt, yes. yes, of what you have done to China. Yes, I see you suffer, to Japanese friends. And I, I say to you that we are of a different generation. We are one generation removed from that past. Our parents cannot talk to each other. No, my father would, he would never, he would be horrified if I was talking to you. And you can see I'm moving back because that's, I feel my father here. Um, but I am American and I am David. And I'm, I, as an Asian American, I am one generation removed from that, just as you are one generation removed from those that cause destruction. So dear Japanese friends, I forgive you. I don't, I don't know if that's not right. Dear Japanese friends, what's right? I love you. I love you. Um, in China, I learned that uh, my father had never said the words, I love you, to my mother. It's very hard to say love in, in Chinese. So, but as an American, I can say that. I love you. <laughs> What is, what is the same? Um, it's hard to say in Japanese, I love you. Yes, but I it's see. easier for me to say, I love you in English. <laughs> <laughs> I can say. <laughs> so, I'm Japanese, so it's very hard to say, I love you. But um, instead of that, I'd like to say, this is my high dream <laughs> in between. Chinese and Japanese. I said so when we our dinner. At that time, I said to you, to David, my high dream is to share our pain, possibly be friend. But at that time, you said it's too high dream. I, I know that, but because the pain is so huge, and it's really important to carry the pain, to remember the war, not to do it again. 
But this is my high dream. We can be closer. So, I'd like to thank you for your generosity to accept us as your friend. Thank you so much. We don't need words. Just now, as we were all holding hands, I just feel this strong feeling and love. And I don't hate any one of you, even though there, even though there was such a lot of suffering. <laughs> I want to say all of, I want to say to all of you here and in my own language that I love you. 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 I think this is how we human beings should relate to each other. Climb you around with that thing. Why don't you? Because I feel very ashamed, and uh, and I'm aware inside that it was a part of me. Says that it was a beautiful thing because it's my art dream too. But then I can't. Do it. And while I'm sorry I shouted at you when you were coming out, again I am like this. And I'm sorry, Mia, that, you know, very much part of me is you. And I, I, I lose this dignity your grandma mentioned. Because of this pain I'm carrying, and I, I'm just. Hanasan. Hanasan. I'm sorry, Hanasan. Hanasan. I want to Hanasan. I want to love you. I want to love you. I want to love you. I would like to know you and I trust you. Hana.
I didn't want to be here in the, to begin with. I didn't want to be here. I didn't want. I didn't feel I belong here. But part of me brought me here, and I go, oh, I don't want to be there. I'm not part of that. Oh, oh, I can't be there. <laughs> and I'm so weak. My body is very weak. And uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, your eyes beautiful. <laughs> I don't want to hear my own voice. <laughs> she doesn't want to hear her own voice, but uh, she said, Kazuko's eyes are beautiful. <laughs> your eyes is beautiful, and your tooth is beautiful, your face is beautiful. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm truly so embarrassed, and I'm still sitting here, and I want to really run over. <laughs> Kazuko said, uh, I understand you, Hana. I have the same feeling. Please, stay there. Okay. I just uh, wanted to say something before we finished. Is I saw this and I was sitting here with, with the group and I was wondering why the why the what did we have, fights or quarrels, did not upset me. And um, it suddenly remi reminded me of my family and how my brothers and sisters fight. And then they make up, but they still remain a family. And I don't want to feel alone here anymore because this is my family. Ending on a note of love and family for the moment. So I would like to say thank you for to help us to do this um, group. Uh, I, I, would, I would like to say thank you, friends. Me too, very much. Because I'm afraid, very much afraid of the people surrounding our group. There are, might be some marginalized people um, especially some are not, might be in, not interested in our group so much. So <laughs> this is my nature or Japanese nature, I don't know, but I would say I am sorry. <laughs> I, I, would like, I don't want to say sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you all. But I appreciate. Thank you all and have a nice dinner. See you in the morning. Yeah, we, we have to thank you because one of the central aspects of process work is Asian, Hindu, Buddhist, Taoist, the ancient the things that bring us together, the things that are on some of your flags. These are things which are close to us. For more information and online discussions with the participants and facilitators of this and other tapes in this series, please contact us at our website, www.iworldwork.com. <laughs>